We have talked this year a lot about new research around Alzheimer's disease. Bless you. A big part of that is because of improvements in blood tests and now being able to track Alzheimer's rates by county. So joining us now is Jim Herlihy with the Alzheimer's Association in the Rocky Mountain region. Jim, this really has been an exciting year when you talk about scientific research. Uh, let's start with one of the blood tests to diagnose Alzheimer's. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, the blood tests are really an important factor because half of the people with Alzheimer's are never diagnosed. Mm. And so without a simple test other than a CT scan or an MRI or something expensive and more dramatic than most doctors will prescribe, people aren't going to find out if they've got the disease until much further along. So if we can use blood tests, if physicians can use it during the annual physical, like you check your cholesterol, mm -hmm. then people will be captured more earlier in the process. So it can be determined if you know they can take advantage of any of the medications that are out there that are only effective for people in the early stages. So I know that, that kind of leads us to this next thing about um, new in the Alzheimer's world is being able to project down to the county level where people are diagnosed. Why is that, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us where the heaviest concentrations are. It doesn't give us a real actionable step because what we know is that there are certain populations at greater risk. Age is the leading risk factor for Alzheimer's. So you can look to Miami-Dade County, which has a 16.6% rate of adults over the age of 65 with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. You can expect the same thing in many retirement communities and in the communities where there's heavy concentrations of people of color, because we know that black Americans are twice as likely as whites to develop Alzheimer's and Hispanics are 50% more likely. So then communities like Baltimore also has a rate of about 16.6%. So we know that, but what can we do with that sure. data? Sure. And I, I think for most of us, there are steps we can be taking to lower our risk. There are lifestyle factors. There's diet. There's exercise. There's, you know, for New Year's resolutions, cutting out some of our favorite foods, frozen pizza, French fries, mm. white bread, highly processed foods, because doctors have found that if you have more than 20% of your diet is composed of those kinds of foods, your rate of dementia or your cognitive decline goes down about 20% faster than it would otherwise. Yeah, and I want to go back to statistics for a second to kind of focus in on Colorado, a state that's over 22% Hispanic, 4% black. And when you look at the total, what is it, 10.7% uh, of adults in the U.S., 65 and older, are living with Alzheimer's. So what are those numbers in Colorado? How does it shake out? Colorado is actually a little bit better than the national average. Okay. We're about 10.4%. So it is, it's a cocktail of age of people, and there's a number of things that factor into that. It's the racial breakdown, mm -hmm. there's levels of education, there's levels of air pollution, there's a number of factors that can increase or decrease our risk for developing Alzheimer's. You were talking about Miami-Dade County and places where there are older Americans. So knowing where people have Alzheimer's, does that tell us anything about the county or just that it's an older population? Either older or the makeup of the population. So, or it can be, like I said, there's, you know, researchers are finding that places that have a lot of particulate matter in the air. I mean, frankly, if you live alongside a highway, you're getting more air pollution from vehicles. Um, Denver gets a lot of air pollution. Uh, Mexico City, Beijing, there are certain places where there are alerts where you see people wearing masks more often than the normal, you know, weather would, would permit that. Well, I would venture to guess that I-70 and people who are used to this conversation of air pollution now have something else to like be curious about, about their own health. Exactly. Yeah, before we let you go, let's talk about reduction measures. You did talk about processed food, which is interesting. I never heard that before. Um, but those of our older viewers and, frankly, younger viewers who you know are looking forward to the future, what can we be doing now to try to prevent some of this from happening in the future? Well, some things that we can do right now are blood pressure controls. I mean, we get our blood pressure checked. We should be getting it almost any time you go to see a doctor. And so if you're, the higher number is the systolic number, if it's 140, that's an indication you should get that down. And even if you're using medications prescribed by your doctor, if you can get it down to 120, you will lower your risk for cognitive decline by about 20%. So, I mean, that's a key one. It's huge. Exercise, diet, remaining cognitively engaged 
there's a study done by University of Colorado that shows that if you are a volunteer, you can lower your risk of wow. dementia wow. because if you're, especially if you're past retirement age, because it keeps you cognitively engaged mm -hmm. even more than it would if you were working because you love what you're doing when you're a volunteer. You don't get paid for it versus some other jobs where you're showing up for the paycheck. Mm -hmm. New Year's Eve resolutions, a volunteer and a better diet. Thank you, Jim. My pleasure.